for that game two against the Coot Tigers, leading to this third game. All right, so LeBlanc banned again by the Tigers. Now that they are back on the blue side, LeBlanc Zedinar were their bans in game one, and Azir taken out immediately by Najin. Azir, Callista, Cassiopeia when they were in red side in game one. So will we see similar bans, some adaptation right here? There is a, wow, they're really concerned wow. with this Nautilus. I, I mean, they saw how much Najin was prioritizing it. They first picked it in That's true. the first round of the draft, both on red and blue side. And they've been using that ult really well. I mean, Praise Life has been a living hell thanks to the, uh, <laughs> thanks to the depth charge, both pure and Duke really locking him down with it. So they're gonna make them take something a little less point and click. And there's the Gragas ban, okay. Okay. All right, so they don't want to prioritize that. So what do the Koo Tigers want to take as that first pick? Probably Maokai or Rek'Sai, depending. Uh, Najin needs to ban Kalista here. You really don't want to give that over in the last game of the series, and there it goes. All right, and it does look like it's going to be that Rek'Sai, so really shutting down the choices for Watch. That does give the Maokai over to Duke. They dealt with it eventually last game, however. And remember, the NAR is still up. Both Duke and Smab are great NAR players. So you have that opportunity. But Duke did get a nice lead in the early game, but it evaporated pretty fast after they got into the 1v1, and we saw the dual lane swap back into the bottom side. So Duke can't really count on having that level of an advantage again, I feel. And that's still a, a tough matchup with NAR autoing you all the time, especially if he goes to that quick hex drinker. So, all right, well, the fallback jungler looks like it's gonna be Sejuani. And will we see the Maokai locked in in top lane also? I mean, Rek'Sai has lost all the games in this series so far. So the Sejuani lock will come through as well as the Maokai. So lots of CC again set up for Najin EM fire. Ooh, and the Lulu was opened up once again for the Koo Tiger, has had a huge flex pick. Could go anywhere in three lanes, and the Sivir being prioritized for Prey. Yeah, taking the Sivir away this time. I think they're really scared about these engage comps that Najin's running. They've moved away from the Vayne, but without the Gragas, that Vayne, I think the Gragas is definitely the higher priority if you don't yeah. want to first pick it on the blue side, because that's really what was enabling the Vayne in the first place. And now you have removed a lot of their speed and set up a speed composition for yourself with the Lulu and the Sivir together. So they've got a lot of opportunity for some early aggression with the Rek'Sai in the jungle as well. Meanwhile, Najin's gonna have to farm this one out more or less. Goom hovering over that Cassidy, but he doesn't know where that Lulu's going yet. I think yeah. locking, locking that in this early would be a bit presumptuous. And now oh, Alistair. Ari of the Alistair. I mean, Ari, you know, does fine in lane, is, is fairly versatile, but does fall off a little bit in the late game compared to some other mages. I mean, Ari, you do play her as an assassin, but she's a little bit in between an assassin and a regular mage. And maybe you take Urgot here, actually, if you're prey, and just run the Lulu in the mid lane. Oh, you can't. The yeah. Sever. Unfortunate, actually, because Urgot is a very strong pick against Ari because as soon as she spirit rushes in, you just grab her yeah. with the <laughs> position reverser and kill her. It, it makes, it's a nice counter pick for team fights. Well, the Gnar definitely not surprising coming in for Smev on the Koo Tigers. What's the last pick gonna be though? Are we gonna see the Lulu in mid? Or will we see something else to go in that mid lane instead? Ooh, okay. Adding some harder engage for the Koo Tigers here in the form of Annie. Well, this is a composition that we might see someone like SK Telecom run, actually having the Sivir with the Lulu in the mid lane. This is not a composition yeah. that we see the Tigers want run very often. It is a pick comp uh, centered around the mid game, but it puts a lot of pressure on Prey to really position quite well because he is definitely one of the, he's pretty much the only source of damage on this team come the late game. So what SKT does is they just try and run at you uh, catch you out of position, but they have to set up for Dragon a little bit better uh, than they did in the last one. So there is the Urgot being hovered over as a possibility. And do we go with the... No, we're not doing that. <laughs> you see that. But Oku 
does as he pleases. Oh, I was just about to say, what about the vein? It's coming back. <laughs> I knew it. Joe Rabbit would be so sad if this wins. <laughs> well, Vayne is back for OQ. Uh, I mean, they've got a lot of CC to lock down targets while Vayne and Ari uh, deal with him. Again, the, yeah. the Twisted Advance and the, or the Sejuani ult, the Glacial Prison combo into a charm can be very powerful just to chain CC. But they don't have the same level of speed that they were dealing with in the last game, so they have to be very careful with how they approach objectives because if they're even a hair off, uh, the Tigers are just going to collapse on them with how fast and how many gap closers this team composition that they're running has, and Prey will annihilate them. I really like watching these uh, Lulu compositions with Sivir, with Lucian, that SKT runs. They're, again, very difficult to play out, even harder than the Juggermaw in a lot of ways because you have only 500 range on Sivir. That's true. But if you use them to create picks, they're less about team fighting, more about eliminating somebody immediately before they can totally group and set themselves up in position. And that's going to make uh, OQ's life pretty hard, actually. Oh. All right, well, we'll see if OQ can pull through. It's the last game of the night. Najini and Fire versus Koo Tigers. Game three, who will take the win? Let's find out as we jump into Summoner's Rift. One person cheering for a quick game so they can get home not too late. All right, well, interesting level one. Already Duke just going to pop a sapling into that brush early before the wards go down. Going to see Smeb, but it's not going to see everybody else that's piling into tri brush right now. Duke sees the boomerang he, there. Now oh. he finally spots everyone. They were trying to set up for potentially a stun there from Annie. No yeah. wards down yet. If that boomerang hit, Duke would have been in some trouble, possibly having to use his flash to escape. So they're trying to detect the lane swap right now. They really want this 2v2 lane. And Annie Siver is not something that Vayne is going to be overly happy with facing in the laning phase. Yeah, and Vayne will walk right through that ward. I mean, you can't really escape a ward. Now, right is he going to recall? Lane. The question yeah, is, the, big question. the mind games are coming in. So I'm pretty sure he's going to oh. recall. He's going to show and recall on that ward, considering Alistair is already going down. So it's pretty simple. I mean, I, I think this is re I mean, yeah. relatively predictable from, from Najin that they would try something like that. So the lane swap is what they're going to get, not to mention they'll luck out and get the side with the dragon control as well. So this is all working out pretty nicely so far. Pure already there. Look at that. They're going to get the freeze too. Nicely played. Good timing. Well played by Najin to try to get what advantage they can for their vein. Awesome man will just have a little bit of a jumble follow. And over in the top, Prey and Gorilla. Not much you can do about it now. It's going to make the most of that situation. So they're not going to give the blue buff over to Maokai this time. Oh, uh, but three people collapsing onto the enemy red here from Najin. Pure trying to draw as much time as possible. With oh, that he got oh it. and he gets, gets the steal on the red buff. That is huge right there. It's going to slow wow. down a little bit. And watch already there, putting the hurt down onto Smeb. Smeb about to wow. run to Meganar, but that's a big denial. Pure actually. It was 10 HP, and he got the last auto in. Yeah, he got the knock up, the passive damage rolling, and then one last auto to steal that red buff. Pretty big against the Koo Tigers right now. Yeah, obviously it's not the end of the world in terms of XP, but it is very annoying to deal with in terms of Wisdom having a little bit harder time clearing, but that was a good read. So uh, they, they thought they were going to have the 2v2 in that side, so they started jungling on the weak side and then were punished for it. This is a really good early game plan from Najin to deal with it. Now they're going to ha have everybody piling in right as this wave comes. They don't even have to burn TP as Prey pushes in, so great lane swap from Najin. Yeah, they are trying to take every single advantage they can here, and Vayne, of course, getting all the farm she wants slowly but surely. 
the solo lane XP will help her indeed. And Duke will just soak in all of that sweet, sweet XP that's been gathered in the top lane. Uh, Najin may have been able, been able to be even greedier right there because after you deny that red buff like that, uh, you aren't going to be as concerned with being dove in that top side. So they may have been able to get away with slightly greedier play, but that is really splitting hairs. Otherwise, Najin, I think, has done an excellent job. And they now have those wards down to make sure that they know if there's going to be any kind of jungling happening in their, around their red buff. As we see, Pure looking to get some wards down and return down into the bottom side. Now, Speb's getting a lot of farm, not really anything Vayne can do to deny it, but still a very preferable situation for Najin. Yeah, I mean, OQ also doesn't mind as long as he can get his own farm. And Watch picks up his own red and now comes all the way back down towards the bottom side of the map. Well, Smep didn't really spot anyone coming in from the river. We're seeing pings coming in from Najin. Now both Gorilla and Wisdom are also here. And Pure just gets spotted. For a second, we see some pings from Ku Tigers expecting that gank coming in from Sejuani. So Gorilla is just going to hide out for now. And then they'll go back and secure some vision behind them. Yeah, they don't know where Gorilla is or Rek'Sai. So they're not going to commit to that. And instead, they will see Annie on the Tribrush ward while Rek'Sai goes up to the Raptors. They still don't have a great idea. Oh, they, yeah, they do. The Raptor buff is already triggered. Yep. And so Goon just trying to harass as much as possible and steal that big Raptor. Oh, wow. Oh, oh, oh. Wisdom really getting starved a little bit in his own jungle. Yeah, he's yeah, a couple big camps right there, and Goon realizing that he had already used that smite to get the Raptor buff means that he's able just to be a little bit tricky, take the big Raptor. Doesn't mean a whole lot, but it is just very annoying for Wisdom to deal with. And he had a slight experience lead for Goon, too, to having taken the big Raptor there in mid lane. Of course, already a little ahead in CS to begin with. Watch there coming in, and the teleport coming in from Duke, and Gorilla's actually gonna get caught. There's a Condemn into the wall. That'll be an easy kill for Okyu. Taking things off with First Blood once again, as they did in game one for their vein on the side of Najin EM Fire. Yep, great t TP. They, did Duke actually get an assist right there? I didn't actually see if he did, but Wisdom's there. Gonna check that brush. Four wards, not going to find anything, and not going to go too aggressive onto Wisdom. They just want to deny all of this massive wave of CS. This is a really beautiful lane swap from Najin. Yeah, I mean, nothing who can do about it at this point. That tower will go down eventually to all these minions, wasting as many CS as you can against the Tigers. And Duke did not get that assist on the game. Look at so. Duke's uh, CS now, too. <laughs> Oh, uh, and they could have pushed this, I feel, a little bit harder. It's not going to go all the way into the tower. They're actually going to give Prey the CS, interestingly enough. He is the core damage uh, member of this team, so he's going to run back. They're going to lose some of it to the turret, but they are intentionally putting Smeb at a disadvantage right here. Yep, choosing to boost Prey as he's been able to farm just fine anyway. Like you mentioned in the beginning, Monty, Prey being that main damage dealer, they have a lot relying on him to win the game. He's only gonna get four CS off of that though. That is really bad. So there were probably two to three waves of CS that were denied overall. And that's coming out of Smeb's pocket mostly. 18 to 36, double for Duke off of that really nice setup in the bottom side. And Smeb will have to watch out once again as his vein shows up in top lane and the possibility of a dive coming in. So Smeb definitely wants to back out. He puts on his boomerang to try to check if anyone's in this brush. And he doesn't have a ward just yet. He's waiting for his trinket, but he's going to spot enemies already. But there's a headbutt and back into his tower. Uh, he's going to hop, hop out in the end. Very concerned about that Condemn at the moment, of course. That's one of the oh, dangers man. of Vayne Alistair is the setup for the Condemn. And now we see Lulu roaming right here just to push them back. But that's going to give Goong a lot of free autos onto this turret. Gorilla walking into the top side as well, but it's so well warded that nobody can really get into that lane. Look at this. Prey now coming to the top side as well. I mean, someone somewhere is losing CS constantly on the Koo Tigers right now. Well, it's just such good uniform pressure from Najin, and they didn't want to push out too far because they just simply don't have the vision. 
to maintain it, and they need to make sure these towers stay up. So Smeb is going to head down to the bottom side. They've actually decided to give him that wave of CS after all, after seeing he's still at 50% of what Duke is at. Yeah, if he doesn't watch out, he will just start to get completely shut down by whoever shows up in his lane. So should be able to start catching up a little bit here in the bottom as four members of Naja show up once again in the top lane. No. It was a mistake to send Sivir bottom and then send Smeb top because the problem is you need the Sivir wave clear just to hang on right now. But Najin looking for... Uh, the Wolf Spirit helping out the Koo Tigers a little bit. Now two members still there, but it's going to be a five-man dive. They're already cut off from their escape. A double knockup coming in from Pure, and they all jump in. Duke gets one kill. Goong still putting out damage from the side. Prey is going to go down to Goong eventually. Smith trying to chase up, but does he have the damage follow through? He does. He picks up the kill against Goong. They're trying to chase onto Oki. Oki taking some tower damage, but Lulu can't catch up just yet, and Smith also not level six. They will get the flash out of Oki, though. Well, yes, but they pay for it pretty dearly right there. Uh, two for one overall, Najin unable to push through the turret, so Tigers reacting in the nick of time, but that's going to be some nice extra gold as we take a look at this dive again. And you can't stand that close to the wall. The Alistair Vane combo will just nail you every single time. Prey couldn't even get his spell shield up in time to block any of that. Goong does find himself on the outside. Smeb hops over and takes him out with a couple of autos. And then they have to burn a lot of flashes to get out from under that. So big scuffle under the top lane turret. It does increase Najin's gold advantage, but Smeb stays alive, is now back in the bottom side, trying to get some of these Krugs as well, desperately attempting to catch up in terms of CS and levels. But Najin going to use this opportunity where they have bottom lane pressure to take a dragon. Perfectly good call. Yep. Not going to really see any opposition from the Koo Tigers. They're too busy trying to catch up. And it will be the first dragon going over to Najin at around the 11 minute mark of the game. Smed playing this so patiently, too. He's just waiting and waiting and waiting for this minion wave to come back his way. And he's scared of what's happening after this dragon goes down. And it's every right to be. Alistair and Vane there trying to push up. Yeah, so. Smeb will just have to keep waiting. He'll have to play the waiting game. There it is, the minion finally pushing through. And he's starting to catch up once again, as he did last game. But we'll see if uh, that's gonna matter much as Oku continues to grow without much opposition from the Koo Tigers. Already finished, or nearly finished, is Blade of the Ruined King. Yeah, Gorilla really in damage control mode right now. Now they're going to push back out with Sivir again and Smeb swapping up, but they may just lose this turret. Smeb with no TP at the current time. Yeah, losing out a bit of CS2 to that turret. I don't, I don't really that, agree with yeah. what we're seeing the Tigers do in some of these uh, lane swap scenarios where I know they want to give Prey as much CS as possible because they really need him to do damage. And they've been, their mid-game focus composition is going to be at a gold disadvantage, which is very problematic for them. And so they're going to be mostly relying on the utility from Nar as opposed to his tankiness because they want to make those picks. So it is really important that a fast Infinity Edge be completed so they can hit the right timing with their composition. Uh, Najin in a very good place, obviously, to take this late where all of that crowd control is going to be very useful to them. But it's still pretty risky. And I haven't really seen anyone else besides SK Telecom play the style of composition that we're seeing the, the Tigers run. So they're definitely taking a page out of a different team's book. And it remains to be seen how well they can actually execute it when it comes to these team fights, because we've just had a rather wacky lane swap that Najin played very well. Yeah, I mean, it was really Najin making things happen there for themselves. And the pink board getting taken out by Wash, but Gorilla does show up. Oh, but eventually Wisdom will pick up his own red buff and back out. Meanwhile, OQ still farming away with not a care in the world. And Smeb still a little bit behind, 20 CS about. 
uh, compared to Duke, but doing his best to at least keep it that way and not even worse. Yeah, he's got a big wave too and another one coming in. So he's actually gonna be able to normalize pretty soon. That dive actually doing him some favors, especially since he got a kill during it also. Yeah. Still going for the Merc Treads and the Hex Drinker is the first items though. So really wanting just to kind of bully Duke in lane. And Duke right now can't push this into the tower because he simply doesn't have the wards to play that aggressively. So he's trying to threaten the blue buff right now, put some pressure on so Goon can get some autos. And yeah. Kuro's gonna step out to attempt to oh. take the blue, but that's a lot of damage on the turret for a blue buff. Yeah, missed out on two CS at the end there too. Really didn't want to give that blue up. So you'll pick that up. Of course, Rek'Sai and Nar, not champions who will fully utilize the blue buff to begin with. Pure looking for an angle from behind. Three members under the tier one mid here. As the, as the Najin team tries to chip away at it, they did a good job. And the next chance they get, they'll be able to take that tower. What Najin really needed was more wards in topside at that current time because Duke wasn't able to shove the wave into turret to deny some of it from Smeb. And so Smeb ended up actually surpassing him in farm now as a result of that. So it's really up to the jungler and support from Najin to continue to move into that side of the map. And had they been able to get those wards in, not only would they have pushed that wave up to the turret, they probably would have gotten blue buff and may have gotten mid, uh, the mid lane tower as well as a result. But there just wasn't enough pressure onto the Tigers uh, at that specific time. So could have been set up better from Najin and they don't get as much of an advantage. And now all of a sudden this NAR is right back into this game, surprisingly. All right, mid lane has just been a bit of a standoff the whole time. And OQ rotating back and forth between the side lanes, trying to push it up whenever he has a chance. But like you mentioned, the Koo Tigers trying to stabilize across the board here. They will react with their own dual lane coming down and bottom to pick up that CS that's been building up. And the question is, Prey has to go back now. He should have an Infinity Edge, and this is one of those fights that the Tigers really have to win because how SK Telecom plays this, if you do not have Dragon advantage going into the late game, you're pretty screwed. Uh, you have to be able to force those fights again and again during your timing window or perhaps get a fifth Dragon in order to be even late, uh, just in terms of damage. Right? If Najin's able to stall out another Dragon, it's going to be pretty darn bad. This is exactly where the Tigers need to do something big, have that big play, have that big team fight. All right, well, 15 seconds left. Najin does have a little bit of a position advantage in terms of Dragon, but the Koo Tiger is putting up pressure here in the Tier 1 against Najin in mid lane. Prey trying to get some poke down onto it. Uh, it's still pretty healthy, though. Goom, meanwhile, is almost at half health, so that will be a possibly an issue for Najin in contesting this Dragon and or mid Tier 1. And yeah, that's actually huge. That he took a lot of damage from the Glitter Lance. He's starting to heal up, but he's out of potions now. And the Tiger's doing a wonderful job of defending their pink wards. Yeah, OQ is at Dragon, though. So Najin will try to start it, but Dragon still hurts a little bit, especially for Pure, who doesn't have too many items. He has to rely on his unbreakable will to tank. Goong is back at full health with that pot, and Ari's p passive. Now OQ going back bottom to farm, so Ku really needs to commit to one objective or another if they're gonna let OQ keep going back and forth and farming like that. And it looks like the tower is their choice. They need to watch out for Sejuani's ultimate, though that glacial prison could come in from a neat little angle, locking up two or three people at a time. And they took out one pink ward in the brush in the river. And there we go, Najin manages to grab another one as well, so. The Tigers, as Goog is back up to full HP, thanks to his passive. They're gonna try and take away the red buff. They will succeed. Wisdom is, okay, he's gonna try and void rush right back All over right. to the Dragon. The Dragon is already at half health. Here's a teleport in from Duke, and watch this round four, Mac Glacial Prison from Watch. As OQ skirts around, Goog trying to do damage with his Spirit Rush, and Wisdom will get caught out. Smep doesn't have Mega Nar ready. Gorilla goes down, Kuro really low. Prey is still at full health, though. Pure will go down. Oki trying to kite out Prey, but there's the Infinity Station. Prey flashes forward, and now the fight has turned around as Ku, Smeb, and Prey go towards a quad kill for Prey, and this 
is how you make this comp work for and the Koo Tigers. That was exactly what they needed to have happen. And even though Watch hit that massive ultimate on the Glacial Prison, you can see how effective this composition is at this part of the game. They hit the item power spike. That was the fight they wanted. And they take the dragon as well. So the Tigers still in this one. They actually take a very small gold lead off of that also. Wow. Prey with 2,100 gold. It couldn't have gone better. So we see the Glacial Prison come in. Uh, Gorilla, ooh, that was actually a waste of the of the wild growth right there. He does get the timbers down, but he would have gotten that down without the wild growth as well. So Duke goes in, but then Prey here actually hitting a big group boomerang blade and getting some pretty nice crits. That crit was absolutely cr clutch. Both of those yeah. crits on the vein. A little bit lucky, and Prey able to clean up Ari as well. But Kuro needs to be really careful with how he uses that wild growth, and he knows, I mean, the team that has run Juggermaw so many times in the past, but using it onto the Annie right there could have set them up for disaster. Well, it's 0, zero 5 score for Kuro taking part in all five of those skills. Same with Prey, of course, uh, did have that death earlier, but gets a quad kill for himself now as that seal and the level two boots. Wow, that's, that's absolutely huge. Again, this is the guy you need the damage on, and for him to get all of that money right yeah. now is incredibly important. Really well done by the Tigers. I mean, OQ also did have to, I mean, the first Boomerang Blade kept OQ zoned a little bit longer than he would have liked to. So OQ not being able to burst anyone down immediately as the fight starts. But you really see the difference, too, between this composition with Sejuani and this composition with Gragas. Because they had to group up right there yes. to go in instead of just picking off one person. It left them vulnerable to that big tibbers that came down from Gorilla. And then all the ricochets and boomerang blades, it's just not the kind of style that's going to, I think, be quite as effective with an Ari and a Vayne pick uh, compared to having that Gragas in the jungle or something with a little bit more disruption. So Wisdom, just trying to get some vision here in the river. I will have to run away from OQ. And Kuro trying to pressure that mid lane as Smeb continues to grow now with a hefty lead. And Wisdom does have to run away from Oki. Oki actually uses the Blade of the Ruin King. Wisdom, can he get out? No, he's not going to. Oh, he actually gets a knock up onto Oki, but he will just get caught. And no tunnel right there available for uh. Wisdom. So Oki really taking advantage of that. Now they're going to try and push down onto this turret, but their siege with this composition is not awesome. Not so great. Generally what happens with the vein. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so all Koo Tigers did have to ditch that mid lane. So the pressure coming back for Goon. So Kuro shows up to try to even things out again until Prey can join them. So the kill not really translating into any huge leads for Najin, but Oki picking up a kill is just as good as Prey picking up a kill. Got them a lot of wards in the bottom side. Look at that huge number Whoa. of Najin wards lighting up that jungle so they can perhaps make another pick, and that's what they need to do. If they've got this Ari and they've got this Vayne, you can continue to skirmish like that, make these little picks. And there's not a great answer to a Vayne split push uh, from the Tigers, so they have to be very careful about how they deal with Vayne, especially now that Static Shiv is done. Finally, Vayne has a little bit more wave clear, so we'll be able to push up faster and create a more imminent threat on the map. And Prey going to be going for the Phantom Dancer here. He really needs to maximize that damage. All right, well, when that finishes, he'll have another slight spike in his presence in the team fight. And his Najin groups up to try to defend their tier one in mid. The minion wave comes in from the Tigers. And nice boomerang blade onto Goong. And another actual boomerang onto Goong will keep him zoned. And the Tigers will take that tier one in mid lane. Yep. Quick movement right there. Too many people from Dodgen actually recalling. So now they have that forward position. This is so huge for them. So taking out that mid turret in a pick comp is particularly relevant because you open up so much more room. And Dodgen trying to do the same thing right here. But for any subsequent dragons, as long as this mid, no, they're gonna have to give it up. They're just gonna trade it for the yeah. bottom one. It was pretty low on health but Prey trying to make the most of it. So Najin also responding by trying to pressure the tier two. They won't be able to take it just yet though, thanks to having a vein instead of someone else who can see you a little bit better. That's even more local gold for Prey right there off of the tower. So he is just getting absolutely massive. 40 CS up at the moment as well. 
Going to recall. There's the Phantom Dancer and a Longsword and a Pink Ward to help the team set up for their next dragon. And this is really scary. Watch decided to go, I don't even know why he has an Aegis. That's not a useful item against the composition that he's dealing with. That Tibbers, man. <laughs> the four-man Tibbers, they're, they're already prepared to get caught by it. So might as well have a shield for it. Oh, and Watch does secure his own red, though. So give him some credit. He still, he still has his head in the game. <laughs> I mean, it just in this particular circumstance, there's just not any armor right now on Najin. Uh, there's no armor in the mid lane because Goom went for that Abyssal Scepter as a second item instead of going for more damage, uh, which, or more AP rather, I guess I right, should say. Right, yeah. Well, you know, to give some credit to Watch, obviously, I mean, the death cap on Kuro, and I mean, the Tibbers coming down with the Lockdown and the Glitter Lance. It's a little scary. It does seem like a little bit of a misjudgment, though, like you mentioned, to prioritize that over the Sivir who just got a quadra kill. I mean, it's fine when Lulu has a death cap, but Lulu still only has one spell that actually hurts you. Oh, well. Oh, they know the Tigger's is weakness, and that's Peekaboo as Prey gets caught along with Gorilla. The shutdown going to Washington. Oku getting a kill as Duke shows up. Oh, he misses the flash, though. Sakura will get a nice, easy escape. Great pick from Najin. Not enough vision right there. They were sitting in that ward that was pink brushed, and now they're going to try and transition this into a potential Baron. It, it may be too early to do that one. I think they should just go for the Dragon instead, and they're going to turn around. All right, yeah. Dragon should be just as fine. They'll get that second stack first, giving them some peace of mind, and of course, a slight lead. So Wisdom, will he try to go for anything sneaky? No, just to try with his Q, but not going to get it with the smite coming in from Watch. Well, still a very close game we've got on our hands here. Yeah. After, after that turnaround, again, that dragon's so important to the Tigers. So uh, they weren't moving. And Pure, wow. what a great engage from Pure. And then followed up immediately, chained in by the Glacial Prison from Watch. Very decisive, very well done. And that's the scary thing about playing against an Alistar, too, is that that spell shield doesn't really matter because if you spell shield the HUD, but you will still get knocked up. And the Tiger is trying to do their own little bait, but they are sitting right on top of Ward. And Prey was out front, so he needs to watch out. No Glacial Prison up just yet, though, so. Yeah, there wasn't really a great way to punish that with two ults down from Najin, so they couldn't use that Ward advantage that they had to make another play like the one they did before. Yeah, looks like we're going to be in for another bit of waiting right here. Two pick comps going at it. <laughs> Hiding in brushes. That's how it goes. OQ does have his QSS, so that's good to know. If he does get caught by that Tibbers or possibly a Gnar ult, he'll be able to try to get out of it and continue to tumble around doing some damage from the outskirts of the fight. Smev does have a finished Randuins, another giant spell. Spectre's Cal instead of the Hex Drinker, since they did transition right into the team fight phase. Yeah, yeah, he just changed that up. Has a random longsword now as a result, however, that he's had for most of this game. And trying to take away the blue buff at the moment. They see all the members in mid lane right there in top lane for Najin, so they're just gonna let Kuro go ahead and take that blue buff all by himself. Oh, it did reset though, it looks like, so. Gonna have to walk oh, back and yeah, yeah, take gotta a couple finally. extra seconds. Now Najin securing that vision around Baron themselves. I mean, look at this war <laughs> from both teams, mostly from Ku Tigers at this point. A lot of Najin's wards have died out, especially around the Dragon Pit and being cleaned out by the Tigers. Being dispersed, kind of a checker pattern. And Pure trying to come in from the side. Nice block from Wisdom. Trying to deny that as Watch was also setting up for a Glacial Prison angle. Almost a steal on the Raptor, but Watch will pick that up for himself. And Smev now being sent over to the top lane. He doesn't have teleport though, so all the Tigers do have to watch out. Prey, uh, that was a little risky. Uh, watch got scared first though. It's a game of chicken. Gotta play fast and loose in this composition, <laughs> Chobra. <laughs> and no big objectives coming up on timers just yet, so. Uh, neither side really has any pressure to make something happen. Yeah, but still going even in this game for Najin at this stage and having the one dragon lead is really good for them. 
And Absolutely. if they could just continue to make picks, eventually they're going to be able to overpower the Tigers in that regard, just through sheer damage and crowd control in this game, having the much better late game, I feel. Yeah, and the Tigers do feel the pressure to make something happen a little bit here, so they're getting all the vision they can around the Baron pit. They're gonna clean that out. That ward from Najin, they're trying to steal the red buff also, trying to draw it into the brush so that Watch can't smite it out from under them. Now there's the ward, but Watch not wanting to get too close to that one. Red buff does go over to Prey, it looks like. And Duke does get caught out for a little bit of damage. Not too detrimental, does have his ultimate, or will have it rather, after about 10 seconds here. This might have to be used by Watch to make sure they don't take unnecessary damage on this turret. But Prey still making use of that help picks and Whimsy to get a couple extra hits on it. Duke's teleport not up just yet, so he's scared to go back a little too early and allow this tower to be pushed through. Wow, nice dodge on that charm by Prey with the help movement speed coming in from Whimsy. I mean, the Tigers are trying to play this like Juggermaw where you actually use the Kog'Ma, <laughs> but the shorter range on Vayne means that that's a lot less effective with this composition. You really need to focus on uh, controlling vision and catching someone out and killing them quickly as opposed to trying to play. When, when you play Kog'Ma like that, it's annoying because he has a bioarcane barrage and has that big, big range as well as the speed from the Sivir, so you can be very effective in the siege, but Prey, I think, you know, he's getting so close to some of these charms right now, potentially setting himself up to get W'd by Maokai too. It's just, there's a lot higher risk. Yeah, and also with the Boomer and Blade, he did take a couple tower hits at the end there too, because he will eventually bounce around to the enemies. So, not as effective as Juggermaw itself, but they made some headway on the tier two in the top lane. Still, that was, some pretty significant time spent grouping right there. I mean, they didn't really have anywhere else to go at the moment. No wards around Dragon really for anyone right now, despite the fact that it is up in 40 seconds. Yeah, everyone was tied up in that top lane now. Najin does get the vision back on the top side of the map, but that's allowing Ku some time to set up vision on the bottom side if they wish. Up here getting one ward in the river brush and then two right near the mid side. And we see pings coming in. Duke does have teleport ready. So does Smith, but he's just going to walk up for now. And Prey is a little bit distant from his teammate, so he only has Spell Shield to rely on. Not going to need it anymore as he groups up back with his teammates. Uh, the war, one of the wards from Pure is still there. And Smev just taking the chance to keep pushing up that bottom lane. He says, well, Dragon's not spawned yet. We're not in danger of a fight. And also trying to keep that rage up. He's very close to turning into Meganar. Should a fight happen right away? Not going to just yet. Smev is actually going to get cut out a little bit, but he's going to scare Watch away. And that's actually going to trigger enough to force Smev to turn into Meganar. Yeah, not the best timing as they just want to keep on pushing. Oh, but they're going to try to use it without that, but a double. Glacial Prison coming in from Watch to keep Ku at bay and a double knock on once again. Prey gets caught in the middle of that, but there's a wild growth and Prey trying to turn things back around as Wisdom goes all the way deep to keep OQ and Gung at bay. Prey still at full health, but the enemy team might be a little too tanky. Nice Boomerang Blade catches OQ though, and that's going to force both teams to back off with Wisdom, the only casualty. Uh, they have to go back right now. I don't know if they're going to be able to fight this dragon. Duke has teleport in case they want to go to it, but it's still a bit risky with Prey at full HP and those Ricochet and Boomerang Blade doing work. Nadja just going to turn right now, maybe try and go for Baron. Bit of a surprise. Smeb is going to recall. He has Baron's, the TP yeah. up. Yeah, he does. And Gorilla's going to start walking over there. So is Prey, but this Baron's going down relatively quickly thanks to the Blade of the Ruin King. Here's a teleport coming in from Smeb, though. Will the Baron go down in time? Yeah, it's going to. And Watch secures it with the Smipe. But who's going to get out of here? Everyone's just going to use Flash. And a Baron secured for Najin Ian Fire. Yeah, just a hair too late right there. Smeb trying to go onto the further ward so he would actually join up with Gorilla. So they trade that dragon for a Baron. Very bold call from Najin, but a good one. They still had all five members. They could just juggle the aggro. Uh, and they had the, the vein, of course, with the Blade of the Ruined King. So sufficient damage just to pull that one out quickly and get everyone to safety. Lots of flashes blown for that, though. Two pretty important ones onto Duke and OQ. Yeah. So Najin, they have the Baron to help push, but it's not going to really make any fights super favorable with those summoners down. But they'll make good use of it here in mid lane to push up against a single Sivir. It's going to be a quick tier two in mid lane in favor of Najin and Fire. And they do gain that slight gold lead overall. 
Now they're turning their focus towards the bottom lane. Kuro's already here. Prey does have to go home to perhaps get a new item and refill a mana. Prey yeah, also going for last the... last Whisper. They're gonna have to give up this turret as well. There's, there's not enough wave clear here at the moment. Just the Lulu. Oh, the smite actually may be enough. Yeah, it's gonna help secure that for now. Prey did also go for that fur enchantment for now. So that's gonna help his movement speed even more and keep finds helping kite around and keep him safe. Trey didn't have time to recharge his mana to full though. Wanted to rush back into lane. Doesn't have those home guards because of the other enchantments so he won't be able to refill as quickly. So uh, you can see the tunnel right back here behind the turret. So Wisdom putting the tunnel there just so he can go back to clear out the minion wave so the inhibitor turret doesn't take damage. He can get there in an instant if he needs to. So. Smart preparation from Wisdom, and here's a TP. Yeah, the top lane is pushing up though, so Rek'Sai joining back up too. Smeb gets caught by the Glacial Prison, but Prey is safe for now, still on the outside, and he's actually trying to go in, but he goes in a little too far. He still gets the kill on to watch, but eventually he gets headbutted back. OQ gets the kill there. Smeb with a double stun under the tower onto Pure and Duke, but they're still really tanky as Goon gets another kill. Duke still alive, so as Pure eventually goes down to Kuro. But OQ now a little low, especially after that Glitter Lance. That. And Kuro flashes forward, but he's not. Oh, he does with the help picks and the Glitter Lance onto OQ. Duke falling back to keep Goong safe, but Wisdom goes in with a knockup. And Goong is slowed down. Gorilla shows up, but the damage is a little locking between, lacking between Wisdom and Gorilla. And he goes down. Goong turns around for a double kill. And now Gorilla, the only member left from the Koo Tigers. So even though the kills went in favor of Najin, look at this, the side wave control, that's what uh, this Gnar was pushing up earlier, nearly taking down the tier two. They saved their turret, but look at the instant reaction from Wisdom to cut off Duke right there. It was all about that tunnel and the void rush as they came in. Now Prey did get caught a little bit far forward and punched back straight into Najin, but at this point the crowd control from the Rek'Sai and the Gnar is just keeping everyone under the turret and continuously taking that damage. And uh, Kuro lands that help picks, gets a Glitter Lance, decides to flash through, flashes the charm for that one, and then ends up with the execute. Duke tries to go back in, and they want to take out Goon right here, but they go just a little bit too deep, and Gorilla actually backs off, uses the Q onto Duke instead, and Kuro doesn't have the damage to finish off Goong as he plays with the vision in that brush. So Goong shows back up with 6-2-5 score and four items finished for himself. Prey just got a QSS, so that is a, a big moment. Still no last whisper onto OQ as well. He got that faster QSS and went into the Infinity Edge, but armor starting to stack up just a little bit. Smev, of course, has had that. Ran to its omen for a long time and Wisdom on the cusp of getting one as well. All right, Frozen Heart there for Duke, of course, but it's only gonna matter if he can get in range. Now Prey with that QSS, if he gets caught by the Glacial Prison or by Duke, he should be able to continue kiting. Uh, no Thorn Mails yet for either Duke or Watch either, so Prey feeling safe from that, but it's really now a fight between the 80 carries. Basically, who can stay alive longer to do damage? But OK has Goon to help with the finish, so that's kind of the advantage that they have there. And he's also vain. He is also vain. <laughs> yeah, fair enough. Yeah, obviously. But he's also OQ, so. <laughs> <laughs> you never know when the tumble's gonna be coming in. But still, Tigers gonna be struggling, I think, in the late game here. They have to continue to get picks. And they don't have great vision control around this dragon at the moment when it comes up in 45. So they have to find a way where they're going to be able to get the drop onto Najin. Now they do have TP advantage. Duke is not going to have TP by the time this dragon starts. Yeah, so Duke should start making his way down after pushing that last wave up top lane. He's actually gonna go home first and then join with the home guards all the way from base. Game's still incredibly close. About 1.5 to 2.5k gold difference each time we check up on the status for each team. Charm being dodged by Gorilla. Gorilla has his stun ready. Tibber is also ready. All ultimates, in fact, ready for both teams. And watch, looking for a big angle on the Glacial Prison. Uh, but we do have Wisdom checking for that, so is Smep. And also Crab 
taken by the Tiger, so it's speed trend advantage. Oh, but Watch still charging too. They want to get to Prey, but Prey's going to get out of there with the help picks and Whimsy. So much move speed, and Duke actually taking a decent amount of damage from that. Watch also has to Arctic Assault out of there. Smith continues to chase him down, and he actually forces them to use the Lock of the Iron Solari also. As he turns into Mega Nar, he's going to be able to keep the enemy team zoned, and the Ku Tiger should be able to take this dragon no problem. Again, more good use of that Nar Rage to secure an objective, and I'm, because of the difference in the timers, there's no Baron that could be taken immediately in response anymore, that minute additional time on the Baron. They're gonna try and transition this into a tier two top lane as the Tigers have to take the long way around the jungle, but the wave just isn't quite there yet. Gorilla actually going to recall right now. He can't make it back to turret quite as fast, doesn't have home guards, goes for that distortion, of course, instead once a pink ward and some extra health for the moment. Oh gosh, I fear for the Tigers. Oh. Smep getting a nice check though. This time around, they learned their lesson and they will inch forward. Oh, nice dodge on the charm with the help of Whimsy. And they will even out on vision once again. Ooh, the Scuttler being taken for the Tigers though. So Baron pretty much in safety for now. Yeah, lots of money too on the Tigers here. Uh, Prey. See if he goes for a Blade or a Bloodthirster as his next item. I'm curious what he thinks the threats are, but probably Blade considering that there are three super tanky targets on Denajin. But he may, it, it's a tough call because he may also value the HP and the shield to deal with the RA. Yeah. We'll see, I mean, either choice you can't blame him. Duke does go down to soak up that big wave that's been forming in favor of the Ku Tigers, and he does have Teleport now too. Now Najin the one trying to check out what's happening near the Baron buff, but the Tigers will see them through a ward and just back off accordingly. Don't want to get into an unnecessary fight when they didn't have vision for all members of Najin. Now everybody grouped up once again. Some members of Ku Tigers will be going back and rejoining after they get a couple more items or a couple more wards for the case of Gorilla picking up another pink ward to have on him. I saw a Smev recall right there on the ward in the lane. But, so they're going to be comfortable just walking in and see if they can clear something. But instead, they're just going to back off right now. OQ also taking that chance to go and shop. And that's a last whisper for him. So he'll be quite pleased to get that item. All right. QSS for OQ also. And Thornmail for Smeb, along with the Hex Trinker being finished there. But and still no Thornmail finished for the members of, of Najin. So yeah. that's pretty huge. Also, Wisdom getting closer to that Thornmail himself. Yeah, it looks like Duke might be able to finish this Thornmail come to the next fight. Uh, really interested in how close Prey might be to his next core item using that Vamp Scepter. But Ku Tigers really doing everything they can, trying to take control of whatever buffs they have an opportunity to whenever they're pushed they up a little Baron. bit. And they started Baron, and they will back out even after the Void Rush coming in as Pure checks it with a ward. Uh, and, ah, they, they, oh, there we there go. We there's go. the pink ward. That could have turned very sour for the Tigers if Najin took advantage of that first. Now Duke's down in bottom lane. He has teleport up. The Ku Tigers, they're all together, I believe. Yep. No, just there. Gorilla gonna use his extra range to take care of that ward. And are they going back to clear the ward in the Baron Pit? Looks like it. Smev and Wisdom will just be able to do it together. Uh, they did trigger that Baron, so he's gonna have to watch out. The ward going back in once again at Baron Pit. It's a really repetitive movement here, even the Observer. Yeah, it's constant clearing, but... So it's one, another one of those games where one of those little mistakes at the how fast these compositions can punish you. Yeah, yeah Prey really needs to watch out when he doesn't have exact vision. And needs to keep track. Oh, there's a Wretched Clear, and there's a knockup. Prey does get caught quite a bit. He's pretty low enough, but he flashes out after the wild growth, but he can't get back in just yet with Goon going around on the side with Spirit Rush. And Spem can't get the ultimate down before he dies, and Prey will just have to back out with such low health. And that's another thing where if Prey was playing Kog'Maw there, that wouldn't have necessarily been a bad idea. But the fact that he's so much more vulnerable to the headbutt pull combo 
in that particular situation. Pure just really takes advantage of it. They're going to try and push out this wave in the bottom side to prevent them from losing too much more. But they have to understand, the Tigers don't seem to get that you have to play this comp, this comp differently. You can't do those same kind of baits without the Kog'Maw range. Yeah. He got a little over eager with the fact that he still had Williams. He had help picks on him. Looks like they definitely will give up that tier two, but will the Tigers have to give up this in Inverter turret? That's a huge wave with the bear buff. They're just gonna have to give it up. Prey can't just keep pushing this out. He just has to run back now. The inhibitor definitely still going to go down, but he still needs to show up in base to make sure that Najin doesn't make any other advances on the blue side base of the map. Yeah, he wanted it to just hopefully push out the wave so they couldn't take even more advantages, but they're going to willingly give up that inhibitor as a result moving their biggest form of wave clear away from the tower. Yeah, pretty big advantage going back in favor of Dodgen with that Baron buff. Yeah, I just feel that the Ku Tigers are, are misplaying it just a little bit. They've had some really good team fights with this composition, but they've also made some pretty big errors in terms of how you engage and not playing with the vision enough or not being patient enough with the vision to get that pick that you need. To Najin's credit, they're sticking together really nicely, and Pure in particular has been doing a really good job of locking down Prey in this game. Yeah, he's keeping an, his eye on him at all times. Anytime Prey makes, takes one step too far forward, he will go in and headbutt him or knock him up with the Pulverize to keep him locked up so that Duke can then jump on before the Spell Shield comes up. And now the bottom lane is still pushed back forward. Uh, even with the Luden's Echo, Kuro can't do enough clearing on the buffed up minions. Najin will take yet another tower with this Baron buff. But what matters most is at this point, Ku Tigers, they can't give up another inhibitor. Duke there taking we go. a lot of damage and they're trying to get the pick onto him, but he's so tanky and Smep does get caught by Oku, takes a lot himself, in fact, a little bit less, and a three-man Glacial Prison, but that's only going to elongate the fight a little bit as Prey joins up. Tibbers comes down onto Pure, forces the Unbreakable Will out of it as Prey chases forward, and Pure will be sacrificed by Najin EM Fire. Kill going to Kuro. And that's why you need to get that those picks in right there. Even though Prey wasn't there, they did enough damage to Duke that the threat of the on the hunt coming in, this is going to be dragon number four for the Tigers. So they've actually managed to wrest control of the dragon count and get themselves on the cusp of actually taking that fifth dragon and potentially closing out this game in spite of the fact that they have all of these super minions pouring into their base at the current time. Prey gonna recall no one <laughs> wants to take the danger of walking in there just for a red buff. OQ going to grab it instead. All right, Goong waiting patiently for a pick here. Making sure not to move, especially with that Rek'Sai lurking around. But that will allow Najin EM Fire to secure vision entirely over the bottom side of the map. Well, still just going to be stall time here for the Tigers until that inhibitor comes back up. Uh, for them though, it looks like it should come back up about the same time that we see that Baron respawn, so at least they'll be able to contest objectives. But Najin will certainly have the ability to put down a lot of wards before that happens in a much more methodical and easy fashion. So many wards from Najin this game, they've done a great job of maintaining more control over the vision. Absolutely, Thornmail is finished for all four tanks in the game also. And another Warden's Mail getting prepared for Pure on Alistair. Ray gonna be having a very hard time. Doesn't have the Blade of the Ruined King here. Went for that Bloodthirster Ooh. for the survivability instead. Uh, OQ finishing his Scimitar right now, so he is capped out here at six items. Yeah, pretty big differences we're starting to see in terms of itemization. Kuro just happy to be playing League of Legends. Happy to be on their ward laughing. <laughs> so we're back to where we were just with vamped up items. Both sides just trying to clear lanes as fast as possible. Of course, Najin has a slight advantage with the super minions pushing up in the top lane. And that's, it's gonna be crucial for Ku Tigers. 
to manage that carefully in terms of timing and when to push. They're leaving Smev in the bottom to push out a wave without super minions, and then just going out and helping Prey to take care of the super minions, which I do believe will be a little bit quicker. Yeah, absolutely. And Smev can just go keep on rolling through this. We have a minute and a half until Baron is up. Najin desperately trying to make a pick right now, just holding on, waiting around and methodically clearing out that mid lane when it does start to inch forward towards their territory. And it looks like the inhibitor gonna be coming back right now. So it'll give the Tiger some chance to prep around this Baron once they take out that last super minion wave. There's only gonna be one more. Yeah, but there's a lot of wars from Najin and you can't go forward on your own to clear it, let alone you can't really get caught around the corner by the Tigers either or for the Tigers, rather. So they really need to watch how Lich Bane is now finished for Kuro. So he's going to start dishing out his own damage in team fights, which should help quite a bit. But that is if you can all stay alive, Najin. Really looking for the ultimate bait here with this ward. Smeb the one with oh, all picks it, and it didn't hit. It they didn't saw hit, Maokai, though, so yeah. that was a bit of a tail. And now they know everybody's in there. Yeah, but then his ward got taken out by Vayne immediately, so Smev gets an idea. Meganar unleashed by Smev, so they're just gonna have to wait for a little bit if they wanna fight. Uh, Baron is up in 30 seconds, so Smev's Meganar should be up just in time. His teleport is also ready. Nowhere else to go though, so he'll probably show back up mid lane after making a little bit of a buy. Frozen Mallet now finished for Smev. Really wants to keep whoever he finds on lockdown, most likely OQ being his primary target, but Goon wouldn't be so bad either. Yeah, Wisdom still just putting some wards in there, trying to destroy Najin's ability to make these picks. The They're going. Glory comes out. Kuro, the one getting caught, but he's going to get out of it right away. Grill on the side, trying to put stuns down, and Prey gets headbutted back into the team, but he flashes right back out. Wisdom trying to zone as much as possible. Prey has an ignite on him, and he can't find a target to keep doing damage to, and he's eventually going to go down to Duke as Duke stays alive, asks for a double kill for Prey. But meanwhile, OQ is at full health, and they're just going to whittle down an absolutely big Meganar, and Oku gets a triple kill, and that should be the game for Najin EM Fire. Wow, what a great cleanup right there. And I mean, you start to see some of these problems with the composition in the late game. There's just a lot more threats from Najin, and it's so difficult for Prey to stay alive. He picked up a couple of kills in that engagement, but so much crowd control coming in, and Pure Man has really done a lot of work on Alistair this game. Take down that inhibitor. They have a small minion wave, but it should be enough to win. So Najin bouncing back from that tough loss against Anarchy, but coming in with a lot more poise tonight, and they're going to take home the series 2-1. Well played by Najin. Bouncing back after a tough loss against Anarchy on opening. They, they win 2-1 against the runners-up of spring season, the Koo Tigers. They look pretty satisfied with that. OQ showing up pretty big with his vein today. 8-2-9 at the end of that one. Yeah, good setup too. They they had some really nice picks. Great synergy between Pure and Watch in terms of those knockups and those engages. So nice win for Najin. There's Mokuza, one of their coaches. There's Peanut. Jumping around. Very happy. Yeah. I mean he, he looks <laughs> thrilled, actually. It was a pretty intense game to watch, and I'm sure anyone from the Najin organization is pretty happy about that win. I mean, especially after the dip they had on opening day, but to come back and win against the runners up and a very respected team still in Korea. A smeb. It's a bit of a migraine after that game. That's a pretty intense last couple of games. Very, very long and also just kind of nerve wracking in terms of the mistakes that you could make just having such dire consequences.